The White House said that the president was not briefed because the information was not verified. But by its nature, intelligence always inherently includes uncertainties. That's why it's intelligence. In your experience, is this something that the president, that a president would have been briefed on, even if they had some dissent from the agencies and from analysts? Look, Peter, I've spent more than a decade at the CIA as an analyst. I have written PDBs as an analyst. I have briefed PDBs as a PDB briefer. I've read them from the White House when I was detailed there uh, to the National Security Council. It is absolutely inconceivable uh, to me that the president wouldn't have been briefed on this information. And I say that because you read about the trajectory of this information. According to The New York Times reporting, at least, this is a stream of intelligence that has that originated earlier this year. Uh, with tactical sensitive site exploitation from our special forces uh, in Afghanistan. It was then corroborated by detainees. Uh, what would then happen as a matter of due course, would that information would come back to the fuller intelligence community. And it sounds like the CIA uh, and the other intelligence departments and agencies uh, have vetted this information using all source intelligence assets. Uh, and the fact that the New York Times is now reporting that this was included in the February 27th PDB, uh, the fact that we know it was briefed to the Brits, uh, and probably, Peter, most important to me, the fact that we know it was the subject of high-level NSC, National Security Council, policy deliberations this spring uh, is a clear indication to me uh, that the White House is just spinning. They are playing semantic games. Uh, when they say that the president was never brief, when they say that this information is not credible. I think they're trying to muddy the waters by doing uh, one thing especially. They are trying to muddy the distinction uh, between the intelligence community's consensus around the veracity of this reporting and the intelligence community's level of confidence in this reporting. Departments and agencies can all agree that something uh, happened, is most likely to have happened, agree with an assessment they can have varying levels of confidence in that same assessment. This is precisely the mm -hmm. dynamic that we saw in the January 2017 intelligence assessment on Russia's attack on our democracy. It doesn't mean that an intelligence agency uh, believes Russia didn't do it. It just means they have slightly different levels of confidence. And I think that's what we're seeing here, Peter. Ned, I want to ask you about the president's relationship to Vladimir Putin in a second, but just something, and I've been reporting this out in recent days that was striking to me. When we talk about these PDBs, is this like a 500-page document, the written briefing a president receives, or is this like, I don't know, 10 to 15 pages? What, how, how big yeah. of, a, of no. a bulk item is this when the president receives such a thing? No, Peter, a 500-page PDB would be counterproductive. The PDB is precisely and only what the president needs to know that day. So typically, it is anywhere from three to five articles, uh, all of which almost never go beyond a single page. So it's not like the president is being presented with a tome of war and peace every morning that he has to make his way through. Uh, it's short. It's crisp. Uh, and it is that way precisely because it is what all, the entirety of our intelligence community uh, deems the president needs to know to fulfill his job as commander in chief. Yeah, that was striking to me, having heard that from other members of the national security community in recent days. I think a lot of Americans figured maybe this thing was just so long, no president could get through it. But three to five articles seems totally manageable for any commander in chief. Let me ask you about the president, though, in this relationship to Vladimir Putin. We know the two men have spoken at least five times, I believe, since since March, just weeks ago. This month, the president said it's, quote, common sense for Russia to return to the G7. Given what we know in these circumstances, what should the president's response have been or perhaps be to Russia? Well, Peter, it's really striking that those five conversations, the president's statement that Russia should be uh, reinstated into the G uh, G8, his consistent praise of Vladimir Putin has taken place in the context in which this president knew or at the very least should have known of the Russian bounties. You know, what is so striking to me uh, is that this White House has sought to focus exclusively on, the, on defending the president. They have gone out of their way uh, to put a spotlight only on one question. Was the president breached? Uh, because what they are trying to do is to defend the president. They're trying to defend his political equities. They know it would be a huge uh, political scandal um, if, if the president had been briefed and chose to do nothing. It sure seems like that was the case. What we haven't heard from this White House is anything of substance, uh, is anything about how this administration is taking on Russia, confronting Russia in the midst of not only this intelligence reporting, but also the intelligence that Russia 
uh, was active in attacking our election in 2016 is doing the same this year. Uh, and of course, all the other malfeasance that's going on from Libya to Venezuela to around the world and Syria uh, that the Russians are responsible for. It was really striking that when Kayleigh McEnany, the White House press secretary, was asked what was President Trump's message to Vladimir Putin, she didn't have one. Uh, and that is, I think, as clear as anything else, an abdication on this president, on the part of this president, as his role as commander in chief. Let me ask you if I can. Has Russia done anything like this, like this allegation before? I was reading there's some suspicions that Russia used proxies in Syria to target Americans. We know this is part of a broader pattern, if true, but is this part of a more specific pattern? It is part of a pattern. Uh, that is undeniable. It's not only Americans, of course, the Russians uh, have attempted, uh, have undertaken lethal operations uh, against our closest allies, including uh, the Brits. There was reporting uh, in recent years that the Russians have, spent op have sent operatives here uh, to monitor uh, the goings uh, and comings of Russian dissidents, of defectors, uh, who may have at one point worked for the CIA and have since defected to the United States. Um, of course, the Russians uh, have long supported the regime of Bashar al-Assad. Uh, they have long taken on our interests right. in Syria. They're doing so in Venezuela right now. They're doing so in Afghanistan. Uh, their goal isn't necessarily uh, to kill Americans. That is a byproduct of their goal. Their goal at its core is to weaken America. It is to make America more isolationist. It's to make America more uh, divided. And of course, Russia is pushing that. Uh, unfortunately, Peter, they have a close uh, ally, someone who is effectively doing uh, the same thing from the Oval Office, making the United States more isolationist, making the United States withdraw, and of course, pitting Americans against one another. The Russians know that when uh, there's turmoil here at home, political turmoil, social turmoil, uh, we are weaker, we are less influential, we are less respected on the world stage. Uh, that's precisely what we're seeing today. Uh, and that is precisely because of, in part, the efforts of the Russians, but much more so a factor of this president, uh, this president who has uh, uh, taken on a same agenda, even if not as explicitly as the Russians. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.